Welcome to CoreLogic's housing market update for February 2017. We're already well into the second month of the new year and CoreLogic figures show that housing market trends have continued on from the strong finish in 2016, posting a 0.7% rise in capital city dwelling values over the first month of the year. Every capital city, apart from Darwin, recorded a rise in dwelling values based on the hedonic index results for January. Additionally, the results over the rolling quarter showed every capital city, including Perth and Darwin, recorded some upwards movement in values. The January results take the rolling annual change in capital city dwelling values to 10.7%, which is substantially stronger results compared with a year ago when capital city dwelling values increased by 7.4%. The higher capital growth rate is largely the result of stronger capital gain conditions over the second half of 2016, which coincided with two 25 basis point cuts to the cash rate, as well as a consistent rise in investment activity. Sydney and Melbourne continue to stand out as the strongest housing markets, at least in annual trend terms. Sydney dwelling values were up 16% over the past 12 months, which was the city's highest rate of annual growth since the year ending September 2015. The only cities to record a decline over the year were Perth and Darwin. However, the rate of annual decline has decelerated over recent months, suggesting the worst of market conditions may now be behind these cities. Hobart also stands out with housing market conditions showing rapid acceleration over the past seven months. The annual pace of capital gains was tracking at 7.8% over the past 12 months, ending January, with homes selling at an average of 35 days compared with 47 days at the same time last year. The sheer affordability of Hobart housing, as well as the lifestyle appeal and relatively strong rental markets, are likely to be some of the key drivers of housing demand across the southernmost capital city. Importantly, late December and the first half of January will typically show a large amount of seasonality in the housing market, with transaction numbers fading away during the festive period. The February hedonic index results should give a firmer indication about how the housing market is tracking in 2017. However, auction results over the last week of January and over the first week of February were also pointing to a strong housing market start for the year. Clearance rates in Sydney and Melbourne remained in the high 70% to mid 80% range, indicating that sellers are still enjoying strong market conditions despite the dramatic increases in dwelling values over the past four and a half years. Other measures of selling conditions have also improved. The average rate of vendor discounting eased over the final six months of 2017, indicating that sellers were becoming less flexible in their pricing expectations and that buyers had lost some negotiation power. Canberra, Sydney and Hobart were all showing average vendor discounting rates that were less than 5% in December. Similarly, the average selling time was trending lower across the combined capital cities as low stock levels created some urgency across the housing market. Melbourne was the only city where dwellings were selling in less than 30 days. However, Sydney, Hobart and Canberra were also seeing homes selling in less than 40 days over the final month of last year. The Brisbane housing market has continued to record a sustainable rate of capital gains, with dwelling values rising 4.4% over the past year. Value growth can be attributed entirely to higher house values, with unit values actually falling by 2.7% over the past 12 months. Concerns around an oversupply of high-rise units across key areas of the inner city are weighing down the performance of this sector of the market. On paper, the Brisbane housing market is looking ripe for attracting higher buyer demand. Housing prices are substantially lower than Sydney and, and Melbourne prices, and yields are higher, which should be attractive to investors. The missing ingredient seems to be jobs growth and relatively soft but improving economic conditions. Over the coming year, it's anticipated that capital city dwelling values will continue to rise. Although it's expected, the rate of value growth will probably slow. Economic factors will continue to have a significant impact on the performance of the housing market broadly and across individual regions of the country. Housing supply is likely to remain as one of the key issues in 2017, with particular focus on the high-rise unit sector. While dwelling approvals and commencements have moved through their peaks, quarterly completions remain at close to historic high levels, while the number of new dwellings under construction also remains at historically high levels. There are still many developments, especially in the high-rise unit sector under construction, which implies settlement risk will worsen through the rest of the year. There is already divergence between the performance of houses and units in terms of value growth across some of the major capital cities. Throughout 2017, as the unprecedented amount of high-rise units under construction approach settlement, it's anticipated that the divergence of capital gains between houses and units will widen further. 
Additionally, affordability constraints, particularly in Sydney and Melbourne, are likely to become more pressing, particularly if dwelling values continue to rise at a substantially faster pace than household incomes. The ongoing growth in dwelling values has made the deposit hurdle insurmountable for some sectors of the community, with transactional costs such as stamp duty adding a further hurdle for market participation. First home buyer participation in the housing market is tracking close to record lows, a trend which is intrinsically linked with housing affordability. While first home buyers are comprising an increasingly smaller portion of the market, investors have consistently stepped up their participation in the housing market over the second half of 2016. If the trend continues, we may see additional regulatory changes that could dampen investment demand. Since the latest round of rate cuts in May and August last year, the value of housing finance commitments for investment purposes has increased by 32% through to the end of November last year. Investors now comprise 48% of new mortgage demand nationally and 57% of new mortgage demand across New South Wales. Finally, with the election of President Trump, the Brexit decision and mounting voter backlash globally, it would be understandable if consumer confidence retreated further during 2017. Lower confidence could erode the willingness of households to enter into high commitment decisions such as purchasing a dwelling. In any event, 2017 will be an exciting year for the housing market. And as always, CoreLogic will be updating you on the twists and turns of the housing market on a regular basis. Don't forget to check out our website for the latest in housing market research and news, www.corelogic.com.au. Thank you.